So maybe you can relate to this situation. You've just spent an hour trying to solve a tough problem on your physics homework, or maybe even on an important exam. After pages of messy algebra, you at last arrive at your final answer, and you draw a big box around it. But now you're looking at this complicated answer that you've written down, and you start to wonder to yourself, hang on, is this thing right? Well, one way to tell is to turn it in and find out later what your grade is. But wouldn't it be nice if you could check for yourself whether you got a wrong answer? If you could catch your own mistakes before you turn in your work, then every grade would be an A+. Well, nine times out of 10, you can catch your own mistakes using an incredibly simple but powerful strategy that beginning students don't always appreciate. I certainly wish I'd made better use of this strategy when I was a beginner. And here it is. Whenever you write down an answer, before you put a box around it, you check that it has the right units. It's really that simple. Here's the thing. We all make algebra mistakes all the time. You, me, everybody. And usually, when we make an algebra mistake, it screws up the units. So if you check the units of your answer and find that they're wrong, then you immediately know you must have made a mistake somewhere and you need to backtrack. That way, you can track down your own mistakes and elevate your grade. Let me show you an example of how this works. Let's take a look at this projectile motion problem. So we've got somebody standing on a cliff of height h, and they throw a baseball at speed v and at an angle theta above the horizontal. So the ball is gonna travel along this arc, and the question we wanna answer is how far from the bottom of the cliff will the ball hit the ground? So how are we gonna figure this out? Well, one strategy is to write down the trajectory, x of t and y of t. Then if we figure out where y is equal to zero, or I put my origin at the base of the cliff here, if we evaluate x at the moment that y equals zero, we'll figure out where the ball hits the ground. So what is the trajectory? Well, remember that there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So the ball is just moving in the x direction with constant speed, whatever it had to begin with. That's v times cosine of theta. And so we have x of t equals v cosine theta times t. Now in the y direction, the ball has acceleration minus g, and it starts at height h above the ground. So the trajectory is h minus 1 half g t squared plus the initial vertical velocity, that's v sine of theta, times t. Now our strategy is to set the y coordinate equal to zero, solve for the time, and then plug that in to the x coordinate. So we have a quadratic equation here for t, 1 half g t squared minus v sine of theta times t minus h equals zero. And we can solve using the quadratic formula. We've got t equals negative b, that's v sine theta, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that's v squared sine squared of theta, plus 2gh. Now we want to pick the plus sign here because we want the time to be positive, not negative. So that's the time when the ball is going to hit the ground. Let's plug it in to our x equation to figure out how far from the bottom of the cliff the ball will be. We've got v cosine theta times that time, v sine theta plus v squared sine squared theta plus 2gh square root. So that's our answer. But now, before we go ahead and draw a box around that and move on to the next problem, let's pause to check our units. We're looking for a distance here, x on the left. So our answer had better be in meters. Well, we've got v here. That's measured in meters per second because it's a speed. Theta is dimensionless. It doesn't have any units. Then inside the parentheses, we've got v again. That's meters per second. Plus this thing inside the square root. We've got meters squared per second squared from that v squared plus 2gh. The g is an acceleration. That gives us meters per second squared times h. That's in meters. So. We've got meters per second inside the parentheses times meters per second out front gives us meters squared per second squared altogether on the right-hand side. Now the alarm bells go off. The fact that these units don't match up immediately tells us that we must have made a mistake. So now we wanna backpedal a bit to try to find out where we went wrong. This quantity in parentheses that has units of meters per second, that was supposed to be the time that it takes for the ball to hit the ground. So evidently, we must have messed something up when we wrote down our formula for t. We were supposed to get seconds, but instead we got meters per second. 
t was the solution to this quadratic equation. We had t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That was the mistake. I forgot to divide by 2 times a, which in this case contributes a 1 over g. So that 1 over g changes the formula for the time to hit the ground, and therefore it changes the horizontal distance covered. g, remember, has units of meters per second squared. So when I take 1 over that, it flips it over, and I get second squared per meter. So altogether, we've got meters per second times second squared per meter times meters per second. The meters cancel, the seconds squared cancel, and lo and behold, we're left with meters, which is what we wanted. We were able to catch our algebra mistake by checking the units of our final answer. Now, checking the units doesn't guarantee that our answer is correct. For example, it doesn't tell us that we got these factors of cosine theta and sine theta correct, because those factors were unitless. And likewise, there could be factors of 2 and half and pi and so on that we can't get just by looking at the units. But whenever you have the wrong units, you know for a fact that you had the wrong answer. There are additional checks that you can make to see if those unitless factors make sense, like checking a limiting case. I'll show you how that works in a future video, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. So the thing that I hope you'll take away from this video is that by double checking your units, you'll be able to catch so many of your own mistakes. You'll get better at physics and your grades will go through the roof. So I hope you found all that useful. For more help with your intro physics classes, you should check out my physics help room videos here on the channel. I also devote part of my time to tutoring, so if you're looking for additional one-on-one -on -one help, don't hesitate to reach out to me at physicswithelliot.com slash tutoring for either physics or math. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.